Um, sleep. I my sleep. Since I've been working out with you, I've become so careful with my sleep. And yes, there are days where I've slept like two hours, three hours because I've had kids and they've been up all night because they're sick and stuff. But like even that, something I never would have thought about helping me in having a healthier lifestyle mm -hmm. um, is now like always in the back of my mind where it's like, OK, I put up like a timer on my watch where it will tell me, okay, you need to start winding down because it's bedtime. And if you want to get your eight hours or seven hours or whatever that I know my body needs, like, okay, I need to start um, looking at that and start preparing for that so that the next day I'm, you know, energized and all the things I tell my kids all mm -hmm. the time. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, apply to me because it's not just things I tell kids. It's actually true. It, it's beneficial um, for weight loss and being healthy and energetic. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's all about like all these inputs into your into your plan, right? And a lot of times people will hire a trainer for just the workouts. And and at a long time ago, I recognized that even if I have you for three, even if let's say imagine I had you five days a week, that's five hours out of 168 hours in the week. There's a, a there's a 163 other hours that you're making decisions that either line up or don't line up with what you eventually want to get. So to look at you know, sleep targets to look at your step totals to look at your nutrition and, and all these other things like your mental health, your mindset. It's very important because you spend majority of the time away from me than you do with me. And I can only help you so much in that hour. So I think it's important that I, I try to, uh, you know, put onto you guys, these, these big rocks, as I call them to support you in, in becoming what you'd like to accomplish. Absolutely. Now, I know that you, you are very much, as you've said, a, a people pleaser. And, and one of the fascinating things I have, I have with working with, with mothers specifically is there's always that there's this guilt that people feel where like they're taking time away from everything else. And there's so many things that you're, you're required to do as a mother, like, especially when you work and all that, like, there's all this demands on your time. But the interesting thing is if, if you invest in yourself in terms of, of fitness and taking care of yourself, if you light your own candle you can provide light for other people so in a way it might feel selfish but it's actually probably the the most selfless thing that you could do absolutely yeah there's especially like during the summer times i was like okay it's beautiful outside like my girls usually there's i try to like i was i always had this guilt where it's out and like i need to get them active and now here i am thinking about myself or i should be doing mm -hmm. this with now i'm like that mom's guilt, oh my gosh, forefront all the time. And, and to be honest, it's always there. Mm -hmm. um, there are days where when they recently had a PA day um, and, I, and I had you come in to train and I was like feeling so guilty. I'm like, I should be doing something with my kids. Like it's their time mm -hmm. off. And I was like, well, no, because in a way they also benefit from me mm -hmm. taking care of myself because mm -hmm. the next day when we went outside and we were out walking about for almost three hours, I was able to keep up. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to, I'm able to like take them bike riding. I'm able to go to the park, walk to the park with them. Whereas maybe before I mean, like, okay, hop on the car. We're just going to go to, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's things that I used to do then that I no longer do because I've been taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and definitely mom guilt. I think it's maybe not necessarily just mom guilt. Um, maybe we just call it mom guilt because usually it's the mother's or, but I guess mm -hmm. any could have that guilt where, yes. um, but let's be honest for myself, sometimes that mom guilt was more of an out. Like it was mm -hmm. an excuse where, well, my kids need me to do this for them. And mm -hmm. it was because hard. Let's be mm -hmm. honest out is hard and and like i said if there were days where you weren't you didn't show up at the door i'd be like hallelujah he's not coming but then mm -hmm. like you knock on the door ring the door but oh shoot you know um, <laughs> he's here I, I have nowhere to go um mm -hmm. but I, my kids would come and see me and cheer for me when i was trying to do push-ups and and this and that and so i like that you know that mm -hmm. mom gets there but i see them cheering me on and it's kind of mm -hmm. like okay just for me it's not just for my my benefit um mm. and uh and i started to look at mom guilt not so much as you know something to stop me but it's like okay how do i change this mm -hmm. so yeah I'm now taking away an hour for me while they're sitting in front of a screen and my biggest guilt comes when it's like 
okay, turn on the screens, you know, it's, it's always mm -hmm. been, a but I'm like, okay, well, after that, I'm able to, you know, take them to the park or do this excursion with them or do mm -hmm. this here or just have enough like energy um, mm -hmm. to sit and do a craft or, or something that maybe before I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever, like just do mm -hmm. it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely mom guilt is there, but it's, I'm, I'm learning to not use it as an, as an excuse to not do things, but also to look at it as, okay, yeah, it's there, but how am I, how can I change it to flip mm -hmm. things around? Yeah. It's, it's reframing it. <laughs>